Dressed in their finest suits and ties, with their top hats cocked towards the camera, these men and women seem to be posing for expensive portraits. But behind their tidy appearances are guilty eyes that hide some of the most sinister crimes policemen of the day had dealt with. These are mugshots of Australian convicts who were dealt with by police for chilling murders, robberies, burglaries, and other crimes in the 1920s and 1930s. Australia's Justice and Police Museum has released 2,500 photographs of criminals from the 1920s. The pictures of murderers, bigamists, bootleggers, and prostitutes provide a fascinating glimpse into life in Australia in the early 20th century. These special photographs were mostly taken in the cells at the Central Police Station in Sydney of men and women recently plucked from the street. The subjects of these special photographs seem to have been allowed, perhaps invited, to position and compose themselves for the camera as they liked. The images themselves are of excellent quality, beautifully composed, and in many cases, quite artistic. Albert Stuart Warkin and Adolf Gustav Butler are listed in the New South Wales or NSW Police Gazette of the 10th of November 1920. They were charged with lewd behavior. This photograph was taken in the aftermath of a raid led by Chief Bill Mackey on a house at 74th Riley Street, Darlinghurst. They were charged with being the keeper of a house frequented by reputed thieves, and others were charged with assault. Eugenia Fellini spent most of her life masquerading as a man. In 1913, Fellini married a widow, Annie Burkett, whom she later murdered. The case whipped the public into a frenzy as they clamored for details of the man-woman murderer. Joseph Messenger and Valerie Lowe were arrested in 1921 for breaking into an army warehouse and stealing boots and overcoats to the value of 29 pounds, three shillings. The following year, when this photograph was taken, they were charged with breaking and entering a dwelling. Those charges were eventually dropped, but they were arrested again later that year for stealing a saddle and bridle from Rosebury Racecourse. As an adult, Joseph Messenger was active in inner Sydney underworld through the 1920s, and he appears in the NSW Criminal Register as a seasoned criminal and gang affiliate. The description of his MO includes violently resisting arrest, frequenting wine saloons, billiard rooms, and race courses. A cropped print of this photograph appears in a police photo book from the 1920s, annotated in pencil, Magsman, with no further information offered. Harry Williams was sentenced to 12 months hard labor in March 1929 for breaking, entering, and stealing. Murray slash Williams' entry in the NSW Criminal Register, April 30th, 1930, describes him as a housebreaker and thief, whose MO includes breaking lead-lighted doors or windows or forcing the fan lights of houses during the absence of tenants. He disposes of stolen property to patrons of hotel bars or to persons in the street, pretending to be a second-hand dealer. Gilbert Burley on the left is identified as a hotel barber, and Delaney's picture is labeled false pretenses and conspiracy. A companion photograph makes it clear that in fact, Delaney was the hotel barber, the one who books into a hotel, boarding house or residential, and robs fellow patrons, usually in the dead of night. In this instance, Delaney was charged with stealing a cigarette case, a hairbrush, a clock and a quantity of clothing from a dwelling house. He is described as a fireman and a returned soldier. Mugshot of William Cahill, 30th of July, 1923, Central Police Station, Sydney. Details unknown. An entry in the supplement to the NSW Police Gazette, Sydney for Skulkerman, alias Cookerman, alias Cecile Landon, is captioned, 
obtains goods from warehousemen by falsely representing that he is in business. Mugshot of Silent Tom Richards and T. Ross, alias Walton, 12th of April, 1920, at Central Police Station, Sydney. Details unknown. George Whitehall, carpenter, handed himself into Newton Police after hacking to death his common-law wife, Eda Parker, on Thursday afternoon, 21st of February, 1922, at their home in Pleasant Avenue, Erskineville. This photo was apparently taken the following morning at Newton Police Station. No entry for Fiori slash Permonto is found in the NSW Police Gazette for 1924, although this photo appears in a later photo supplement in which Fiori is described as a safebreaker. Mugshot of John Walter Ford and Oswald Clive Nash, June 1921. Mugshot of Ernest Joseph Coffey, 2nd of June, 1922. Location unknown. Mugshot of Ernest James Montague, 29th of August, 1927. Central Police Station, Sydney. Walter Keogh appears in the photo supplement to the 1923 NSW Police Gazette, 7th of February, Group 1, P4, identified as a pickpocket, and later in 1928, 26th of December, Group 4, P15, as a suspected person and bogus land salesman. Keo was also profiled in the newspapers as a go-getter, a con man who sells suburban building blocks at grossly inflated prices, by falsely leading the buyers to believe the lots may be promptly resold for a huge profit. Mugshot of Thomas Bede, 22nd of November, 1928. Captioned, This man refused to open his eyes. Mugshot of Masterman Thomas Scoring, 29th of November, 1922. Central Police Station, Sydney. Patrick Riley, alias Matthew Edward Riley, was convicted in October, 1924, of making counterfeit coins, and of having a coining instrument in his possession, for which he was sentenced to two years' imprisonment with hard labor. West is mentioned in the NSW Criminal Register as a pickpocket and gambler. Walter Smith is listed in the NSW Police Gazette 24th of December, 1924, as charged with breaking and entering the dwelling house of Edward Mulligan, and stealing blinds worth 20 pounds, and with stealing clothing worth 26 pounds, in the dwelling house of Ernest Leslie Mortimer. He was sentenced to six months hard labor. A picture of Sidney Grant, alias Pretty Sid, appears in the criminal photograph section of the New South Wales Police Gazette, 2nd of May, 1923 captioned Confidence Man. In his landmark sociological work, The Big Con, first published in 1940, David Maumer describes a con trick known as the hot seat, then being practiced in Europe by such masters of their profession as Pretty Sid, Snowy T, Kangaroo John, Melbourne Murray, and Devil's Island Eddie. It was not unusual then for the most accomplished Australian con artists to seek fresh fields in Britain, Europe, especially France, and North America, where their skills were held in high regard by fellow professionals. The quartet pictured were arrested over a robbery at the home of bookmaker Reginald Caton of Todman Avenue, Kensington, on 21st of April, 1921. No charges were brought against Thomas O'Brien, but the other three were convicted, and received sentences of 15 months each. Details surrounding this particular photograph are unknown, but Sidney Kelly was arrested many times and much written about in newspapers during the 1920s, 30s, and 40s. He was charged with numerous offenses, including shooting and assault, and in the 1940s was a pioneer of illegal Baccarat gaming in Sydney. 
This image appears in the photo supplement of the NSW Police Gazette, 26th of July, 1926. Page 6, captioned, Illicit drug trader, drives his own motor car, and dresses well, associates with criminals and prostitutes. Harold Price was a thief and gunman. This photograph was taken after he was arrested and charged with committing robbery under arms at a house in Randwick, Sydney, for which he was sentenced to two years hard labor. The handwritten inscription on this unnumbered special photograph reads Frederick Edward Davies, stealing in picture shows and theaters Dietz, Surridge Clark, and Breen Central. Police held sneak thieves in particularly low regard, which may account for the decision to photograph Davies in front of the police station's toilet stalls. The precise circumstances surrounding this picture are unknown, but Ellie's is found in numerous police reports of the 1910s, 20s, and 30s. He is variously listed as a housebreaker, a shopbreaker, a safebreaker, a receiver, and a suspected person. A considerably less self-assured Ellie's appears in the NSW Criminal Register of 29th of August, 1934, number 206. His convictions by then include goods in custody, indecent language, stealing, receiving, and throwing a missile. The crimes of Esther Eggers include malicious injury to property and wounding with intent to do grievous bodily harm. When a police officer arrived to arrest Eggers for malicious damage, she attacked him, causing a serious injury. Eggers was sentenced to 12 months prison at age 22. Matilda Tilly Devine used a razor to slash a man's face in a barber shop and was sentenced to two years in jail. Vera Purcell led a group of two other teenage girls, age 14 and 17, who stole a large quantity of clothing from a Darlinghurst house. They were convicted, and the younger girls were sent to charitable institutions. <laughs> 